Hello friends, my name is K. Bharat Kumar and today I am here to give you a status report on the battle of sorts between the Adani Group and Hindenburg Research. You may have already caught it on the news, read it in the newspapers, but there may still be a few questions that remain puzzling to many of us. Why are banks talking about their loan exposures to the Adani Group? Why is the LIC commenting on its investments? And is there a cause for concern, for example, with this financial metric called current ratios for some of the Adani Group funds. Before we dive in and find out some answers, all the information that you see here in this presentation has been sourced from our own reports, company data, or from wire agencies, Press Trust of India and Reuters. After Hindenburg released its report, the last few days have seen some rough seas for Adani Group firm stocks. Adani Enterprises, the group's flagship especially, has struggled to gain subscriptions from retail investors for its rupees 20,000 crore follow-on public offer. Today, as we record this video for you, is the final day before the offer closes. Day 1 saw an anemic 1% of shares being subscribed. Day 2 saw a total of 2%. Day 3 was about 3.1%. But the anchor investor portion that closed one day before the retail portion opened was a different story where investors picked up rupees 6,000 crore worth of shares. A day before Adani Enterprises FPO opened for public subscription, Hindenburg Research released a report in which it flagged substantial debt that the Adani Group carried. It claimed that over two years of research, it had found that the Adani Group had indulged in brazen stock manipulation and accounting fraud scheme over decades, as well as made improper use of tax havens. Hindenburg said it had reviewed thousands of documents and conducted site visits to almost half a dozen countries. Hindenburg also disclosed that it had taken a short position in the Adani Group. Short selling is the opposite of buying a stock in the stock markets, hoping its value goes up and then selling it for a profit. Investopedia terms short selling as opening a position by borrowing a certain asset, selling it in the market for a certain price, and then if your bet is right and the stock actually goes down in value, you buy it back at a lower price and then return the borrowed asset, thus hoping to make a profit in this transaction. Essentially, a short seller takes a bet that the company's stock price is overvalued and that it would go down over time and hopes to make a profit on it. The Adani Group said Hindenburg's report was a malicious combination of misinformation and allegations that had already been discredited. It cited the timing of the report and claimed that there was malified intent on part of Hindenburg Research to have released the report just before the FPO opened. When the Adani Group said it was considering legal options it wanted to pursue against Hindenburg, the latter actually welcomed it and said if anything the Adani Group should file a case in the US against Hindenburg because Hindenburg had a long list of demand for disclosures of documents. Sunday last, Adani put out a statement referring to points raised by Hindenburg and said the report had incomplete extracts of disclosed information which has been in the public domain for years, if not decades. It also said the report attempted to highlight allegations which have since been judicially determined to be false. Following this exchange of words between Adani Group and Hindenburg Research for about two days, Adani Group stocks plummeted, some of them actually touching the lower 20% circuit. Adani Enterprises itself closed Friday, January 27, having slumped 18.5%. A PTI report details that over three trading days ended Monday, January 30th, the Adani Group firms had collectively lost more than Rs 5.56 lakh crore in market valuation. A slide that you see on your screen now shows that shares of these five Adani Group firms fared pretty poorly over those three sessions. Adani Total Gas lost almost 40% in value. Adani Transmission almost 38%. Adani Green Energy 38%. One of the concerns that Hindenburg had raised in its report was that many of the Adani stocks were overpriced. A report by a sister publication Business Line pointed out that Adani Enterprises, the flagship of the group, had seen its revenue rise 1.6 times since pre-COVID days, but its valuation had risen 11 times in the same period. Before we go ahead with more corporate and financial details, let's take a look at what Hindenburg is. Hindenburg Research claims that it is a forensic financial research firm. It says it has a track record of going about finding out wrongdoing by companies and placing financial bets against those companies. In its website, it claims that since 2017, 
it has flagged wrongdoing in at least 16 different companies. Hindenburg was founded in 2017 by Nathan Anderson. But why the name Hindenburg? The company explains on its website that Hindenburg was the epitome of a man-made avoidable disaster. In 1937, almost 100 people were loaded onto a balloon or an airship filled with the most flammable element in the universe. This was despite dozens of earlier hydrogen-based aircraft meeting with similar fates. Nonetheless, the website says, the operators of the Hindenburg forged ahead adopting the oft-cited Wall Street maxim of this time is different. The company claims that it looks for similar man-made disasters floating around in the market and aims to shed light on them before they lure in more unsuspecting victims. Hindenburg is best known for its research report on electric truck maker Nikola Corp in September 2020. It claimed that Nikola had been deceiving its investors. Hindenburg challenged a video that Nikola had produced showing its electric truck cruising at high speeds. In fact, it was nothing but a video of a truck being rolled down a hill. Nikola founder was eventually convicted of fraud. Brokerage houses CLSA and Jefferies have both noted that the Indian banking system's exposure to Adani Group firm loans was within manageable limits. In a note, Jeffries said that Adani Group firm loans accounted for 0.7% of all the loans outstanding for Indian public sector banks. CLSA said that Adani Group firm loans accounted for less than half or 40% of outstanding loans in Indian banks. India's largest life insurance company, Life Insurance Corporation of India, said its exposure to the Adani Group was less than 1% of the total assets under management. In a statement, it pointed out that the total purchase value of equity bought over many years in Adani firms was Rs 30,127 crore. The market value for the same as on January 27th was 56,142 crore rupees. Bloomberg said in a report that five of the seven listed Adani Group firms had current ratios less than one. Why is this important and what is the current ratio? It is the ratio that helps determine a company's ability to pay short-term loans. It is the ratio of current assets to current liabilities. If a company's debt outstanding became due all at once, does the company have the wherewithal to repay it is the question that this ratio helps answer. If the ratio is less than one, then the company does not have enough capital to do so and has to depend on further debt. A report such as Hindenburg's can cause bond investors and bankers to stay away and even equity investors to stay away, thus impacting a company's ability to raise funds, thus eventually affecting its ability to grow or repay earlier loans. A couple of large Indian banks have commented with regard to their exposures to the Adani Group. Punjab National Bank, in an earnings call with analysts, warded off concerns saying its exposure to the Adani Group firms was small at 7,000 crore rupees. SBI did not comment specifically on its numbers in terms of exposure to the Adani Group, but said it was compliant with current norms. It referred to the Reserve Bank's large exposure framework norms, which says that the sum of all the exposure values of a bank to a group of connected counterparties must not be higher than 25% of the bank's available eligible capital base at all times. Why have banks and the LIC come out with statements at this juncture? Because all these institutions are a critical part of the country's financial system. So not only economic well-being, but also the safekeeping of deposits of the citizenry or the claim settlement or assured returns for policies from the country's largest insurer, all of these cannot ever be subject to doubt at any point in time. Markets watchdog, SEBI, or the Securities and Exchanges Board of India, is also in the picture right now. Reuters had a report citing unnamed sources that SEBI was reviewing the Hindenburg report that was released last week. In the past two, SEBI had sought further clarity from the Adani Group for some of its transactions. For example, for Adani's acquisition of wholesome stake in Ambuja Simmons and ACC, SEBI examined the offshore special purpose vehicle used for the transaction, according to a Reuters report. The use of this vehicle was disclosed by the group as part of the acquisition announcement in May 2022. The regulator had found as many as 17 foreign offshore entities involved in the funding of the transaction. The regulator had sought clarity from the group on these entities when the group approached it for regulatory clearance last year. These responses are under SEBI examination. 
In July, the regulator had initiated a probe of offshore funds based out of Mauritius, which had large holdings in Adani Group's listed firms, which potentially raised concerns about stock price manipulation. With some water having flowed under the bridge, the question that comes up now is, what next? Well, this battle between investor and corporate seems set to continue for some more time. The Adani Group, with regard to its FPO, refused to change the duration for which the shares were on offer, nor has it changed the price at which the shares would be offered. Group CFO has indicated to Business Line that if the FPO does not go through, then the company would have to defer its expansion plans by six to nine months. That's all we have for now. As soon as anything of consequence comes up, we'll be back with an update. See you soon and you have a lovely week ahead.